Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op. We are coming up into photo buying season, or rather just oh boy. any holiday buying season, where uh, you and everyone I know is about to spend all of their money, all in the span <laughs> of about two weeks, uh, buying all the things for everyone they know, mom, dad, brother, sister, that neighbor down the street who you only see once a year. Um, and so if any of those people on your list or photographers, or if you're a photographer, which is probably why you're listening to this, uh, and you're going to start making one of those lists so that you can send it to everyone, you know, but, uh, we are working on a holiday gift guide right now, uh, that uh, we are going to drop next week and we're going to actually drop it a day early. It is coming out on Sunday instead of Monday. So you still have the weekend, uh, to get all of your, uh, sales and deals going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we drop that holiday gift guide, we wanted to talk Talk about things that you should not buy. Yeah. So this episode is photo gear you shouldn't buy um, because we don't want you wasting your money on stupid stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is this is to save you from yourself. <laughs> and uh, uh, some of the th- these things I should say um, right off the bat, uh, I I personally have bought before. I've fallen in the trap. So uh, so this is from from somewhat personal experience, uh, warning you away from um, bad things. And the first thing on that list, um, which kind of en- encompasses a lot of a lot of stuff actually, is those uh, seemingly attractive mega bundles of stuff where it comes with a camera and often a couple lenses and a bunch of memory cards and a bag and uh, filters and all sorts of junk. Uh, and that's what it really is, is junk. Uh, these bundles look really cool. You're think you're, you think you're getting a really good deal by getting a lot of gear at once, but really you're getting a lot of really crappy, cheap gear um, at an inflated price. It will price. either never be used or yeah. thrown out immediately or break immediately. Exactly. And yeah, like you said, inflated price. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you were to actually buy all that stuff individually you are paying full retail for mm-hmm. all that stuff you don't want yeah yeah so avoid the bundles um uh, photography like many things is often a like buy once cry once uh deal and <laughs> uh, these bundles seemingly uh like they try to trick you into thinking that they're that they're a good deal bundling everything together but really you should buy everything separately and in higher quality um and then you will not immediately throw this stuff in the trash so avoid the mega bundles um i will say occasionally i've seen a bundle here and there that's worth it but usually it's like a first party promotion kind of thing where they include real like first party batteries and and lenses and stuff like that it's usually like a a lens battery kind of uh, bundle those occasionally can be good but really if it's a bundle immediately immediately be suspicious and it's like 99.99 percent likely to be trash so don't buy i've it. bought bundles twice mm-hmm. uh number one was when i f- bought my very first uh camera from costco mm-hmm. five hundred dollars and you walk out with one of those you know bags with all the trappings that uh yep. are no good and time number two was it was the cheapest way that i could buy um a backup 5d mark three for mm-hmm. myself yeah and so what i did was um the 5d mark three when it came out was about thirty six hundred dollars and so i found one of these bundles for like twenty two hundred dollars and then uh i bought that bundle and then i sold off all the stuff in the bundle individually for about seven hundred dollars so i ended up spending about fifteen hundred dollars for my backup camera yeah (laughs) and and that's where they can work out like if you're going to buy a bundle but you know it's it's going to be stuff that you're going to sell or that's going to be useless to you but you're buying it just for whatever reason it has a cheaper price um uh, for the like main thing you want in the bundle then fair enough but uh as a starting photographer probably don't do it that's something so you do so later. before we dive into the rest of this list let's throw in one more caveat hmm. this list is if you don't know what you're doing or you don't know what yes. you're buying <laughs> don't buy anything on this list yeah exactly. obviously everything on this list is hey do you need to buy that thing for this one specific purpose because you know what you're doing Go awesome for it. yeah do it 
buy it. But if you don't know what you're doing, this is a uh, really good advice for any starting photographers or if you are listening to this episode because a photographer sent it to mm-hmm. you as please don't buy me any of this for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you know what you're doing, uh, this doesn't apply. Sort of. Maybe right. it does. <laughs> so, so let's kind of move on to the next one cheap memory cards Mm because i know memory cards can be bought for ten dollars or several hundred dollars Mm -hmm. so i will i will let you explain the difference because you are much more tech savvy than i am but uh what should people be looking for in memory cards and what are the things to be avoided uh so memory cards um to some degree depend on what you're doing with your camera um although i should say that good memory cards are increasingly i shouldn't say uh, cheap but reasonably priced uh, nowadays so there's almost no excuse to buy really really cheap crappy memory cards um but basically memory cards affect all sorts of stuff like it affects how fast your images move from your camera's kind of uh temporary memory or or ram to the more uh, permanent storage memory or the memory card um and so f- right off the bat um like if you're shooting a lot of you know burst photos you want a fast memory card to get those photos on the memory card as quickly as possible if you're shooting video and you have a, a, a memory card that's too cheap too slow um then literally you can't shoot 4k a lot of the time or you if you buy a memory card that's too cheap and therefore too small um in capacity you can't shoot very much um before you run out of space um so there are a lot of reasons uh performance reasons not to buy cheap memory cards another reason is um oftentimes they're a trap there is a unfortunate uh humongous market around fake memory cards um where they make them look like they're uh premium brand name memory card cards from you know samsung sandisk you know a lot of the the name brands but really they are cheap knockoffs that uh, fake a higher capacity or or are you know fake a higher speed um and even even to the point where you'll put them in your computer and they'll show up as a larger card but really it's a small card that is uh through kind of software tricks faking its larger size um so that is another reason to to avoid cheap memory cards if it uh is too good to be true it that's you know that's probably the case um if you see some like super fast super huge sandisk or um samsung uh card that's just like a crazy low price it is probably fake um you can get good deals on those cards for sure um but if it's just way too cheap then uh you should probably avoid it so um, without knowing what the person is shooting or what camera they're shooting on at what bit rate, mm-hmm. what is just your generic blanket across the board? This is the like right speed and size capacity you should be looking for. Oh, uh, that's that is difficult. just like minimum. Um, What's your minimum benchmark? Uh, I personally don't go under. Um, I would say don't bother with anything under sixty four gigs nowadays, um, because it's just they're so inexpensive, even at that, even if that's uh, storage space, that I wouldn't go under that. Um, the speed now, speed is really bad because the industry is is terrible about having a consistent uh, speed designation that's easy to read and understand um the uh u1 cards are the lowest i would go for for most uh use just because they are again very reasonably priced u3 if you can avoid it uh, or if, not if you can avoid it u3 afford if you can it. afford it <laughs> is uh definitely where you should go so um like i for example it sounds really weird but i pretty much shoot exclusively to micro sd cards nowadays because i can swap them between gopros and uh, other small cameras and even my main dslr i shoot um micro sd with cards an because, adapter. with an adapter because uh because you can get micro sd cards that are you know 256 gigs 512 gigs even terabyte micro sd cards now that are super fast plenty fast for 4k video um and they're just nice and uh, and uh and versatile uh, as a form factor so um i really point people in the direction of buy micro sd cards that are reasonably fast so like the samsung um, evo evo plus evo select there's a bunch of different they're all basically the same card, but they uh, have different uh, brand names for different 
uh, companies that offer them like you know best buy uh, amazon or like amazon's plus best buy is select i think it's something like that but um yeah like the samsung evos are really good um the higher tier uh, sandis cards are uh really good um those are the ones i stick to most of the time um and definitely test your cards immediately when you receive them and uh make sure they work yeah make sure they work make sure that they're at the speed that you expect um copy some files onto them um there is a piece of testing software that i use uh for um cards that i can uh we can link in the description of this as well that i use specifically to test all of my memory cards and make sure they're not fake um when i get them so definitely test your cards I didn't even know that. Well, to yeah. keep uh, in the interest of time to keep this uh, episode moving along, um, we will have all of these recommendations for what you should buy in mm-hmm. our holiday gift guide next week. So we're going to look up some uh, the best deals that are happening, and we're going to put them in that episode. So mm-hmm. uh, avoid cheap memory cards yep. and make sure that the cards that you do get, which they are required, so you need some memory cards, yes. make sure the cards you get <laughs> are good good ones yeah for sure um all right so uh next on our list uh uv filters so the reason why uv filters are just so atrociously stupid let's say you buy just you know a 7200 right that lens might have cost you two thousand dollars you are now about to put a twenty dollar piece of plastic or glass in front of your two thousand dollar lens why 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 (laughs) why would you do that uh i mean no no there's no reason okay so (laughs) the argument is often because it protects your lens right that is yeah that is the so the people that say that it reduces glare it's bs no it doesn't it doesn't it does nothing it actually often adds glare if you have a crap especially crappy uv filter the other the other thing is people say that it protects your lens use a lens hood i actually have Mm -hmm. one here in front of me uh if you drop this and it falls on a rock, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, you have to be incredibly unlucky for a rock to actually touch the glass Mm -hmm. versus you drop a UV uh, lens or a lens with a UV filter on it. Like, yeah, it's going to hit that rock and you're going to lose that $20 immediately. Um, Just, there's no reason. Um, there, uh, something that I will add on to this are other filters, Mm -hmm. um, wait to buy filters until down the road. You might, especially if you shoot a lot of video, need an ND filter. Mm -hmm. You might, uh, decide that you want to be an old school landscape photographer and you hate editing. So you might get like a graduated filter. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might shoot a lot of cars and need like a circular polarizer, but those are things that you don't need until later. Yeah. So for right now, do what you can with the camera you have and your editing software, um, but you probably don't need filters. Speaking of software, um, we've got a few things related to the software on this we list. We do. And uh, the first one is uh, AI retouching software. Um, there's an increasingly large amount of this out there, um, software that promises to basically remove the editing burden from you and everything will be done with uh, AI. Um, yeah. Here's here's something I will say <laughs> about that. I own a piece of AI retouching software that I use constantly, mm-hmm. all the time. But when you are just starting off, it hinders you in two different ways. One is it does the thing for you so you don't learn how to do it. And I'm not saying like, hey, you have to learn math the hard way because you'll never have a calculator in your pocket, which is what all of my teachers told me, um, <laughs> which we all have calculators in our pocket now. Uh, so so it's, it's not just like, hey, you got to learn how to do it the hard way. But what it is, is you need to learn taste. Yeah. So it will just do it, and you will think because this software did it for me, it looks good when, in fact, it looks awful. Because these software uh, things, they do amazing things, but their presets are generally always terrible. Mm -hmm. So until you know the look that you're going for and what you're going for, avoid the automatic anything Mm -hmm. because you need to learn your taste and what you like before some you know some developer out in ohio or whatever swoops in and decides for you so uh the reason why i bought the retouching software i finally broke down and did it the the other thing that retouching software does for you is it gets you 90 percent of the way there not a hundred 
So same with like HDR software, any of these kind of like, hey, it makes your photo amazing. It takes you 90% of the way there, but not the last 10%. And mm -hmm. until you learn how to finish that last 10% yourself to really make a good photo, that first 90% is going to confuse you more than it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. So that is something to keep your eye on for down the road, but it's not something that you need right now when you're learning. Yeah, agreed, agreed. So yeah, AI retouching software, um, you touched on that briefly, presets um, in general. Uh, again, it's not it's not as sophisticated as uh, AI retouching software um, to some degree, but it's still uh, automatic. Um, it removes a lot of that learning and developing I absolutely love process. presets, but oh, I, I love making my mm -hmm. own presets. Yeah, yeah. When you're Buying making your own presets, someone else's cool. preset, if you didn't shoot it in the same light, on like on the same camera with the same, you know, mm -hmm. color profile, then all of a sudden yours doesn't quite look like theirs, and it's a little weird, and you don't know why. And some people's presets are really good, mm -hmm. where the preset does a thing, and then you're like, oh, that's amazing. Like in Photoshop, I have some presets where they apply like smart filters, so you can go back in and tweak the settings as needed. And then I have other presets and actions that are just like, and it's flattened and done you yep. can't fix it you don't like it too bad yeah. so just just avoid all of that for now uh elsewhere in the um digital realm uh expensive workshops uh slash online classes um a lot of this uh this educational material there's a lot of good educational material out there um and some of it is expensive but starting out uh i don't think that this is the right way to go yeah, so I would say especially for the don't buy, mm -hmm. um, if you're buying this for someone as a gift, don't buy them work mm -hmm. as a gift. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I have a ton, an absolute metric ton of educational material that I have never gone through. Um, because if I days. didn't pay for it myself, just like, oh, a free class. Sure, yeah. I'll download it. I don't really have time today. I'll get to it next week. And then I've never gotten to it. So um, there is one thing of if you don't pay for it yourself, you will not use it. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that um, until you know the things that you don't know type thing, um, buying a workshop, says the guy who writes and sells workshops, <laughs> buying a workshop um, right out of the gate is probably not the best thing mm -hmm. to do. Um, until you kind of understand a little bit more or you know that this is a thing that you want to do. So that's not to say like buying like a $20 book of like how to get started or buying, yeah, you know, like this fine. or doing like a free 90 minute online. Like here's how to get the most out of your new camera type thing. Those types of things I think are great. Yeah. Um, the thing to avoid is don't go buy a $1,000 in person like master class. Um, you're not there yet. You don't need it. Um, and either it'll be a waste of money for something that you could have gotten much cheaper, or it will be so advanced that it'll be over your head. Yeah. So just hold on on anything that's too expensive. Wait on those. You know, it, you think it's going to be nice, but you're not ready for it yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get back into hardware. Um, photo printers. Uh, I am not, <laughs> I certainly am not a fan of buying photo printers. I love, uh, printing my photos, but mm -hmm. I don't print them myself. No, no. Uh, uh, photo printing services are so good, so much better than you're going to be able to do at home and really quite reasonable that, um, I see no reason to own a photo printer. They're often a huge hassle to run. Um, they're often quite expensive, um, they always run out of like cyan yeah. right when you need to print a black and white whatever. <laughs> and... Yeah. Uh, if you if you need to print documents, fine. I own a laser printer for document printing. I yes, I am archaic. And I, occasionally I, I print physical. I have documents. a printer. I have a photo <laughs> printer. It yeah. doesn't mean I use it that often. Yeah. I used to have a photo printer and I got rid of it because just uh, commercial prints are are better. Full stop. They are and really they not are. not so expensive as to be worth buying your own printer. Um, I guess if you're doing something really specific, but then you would know. Um, so if you're Again, new, don't the caveat, buy a photo printer. The disclaimer at the beginning. <laughs> yes. If you're doing something really specific yeah. that you know, great. Um, you know what? Actually, that comes to the next thing on the list. Niche equipment. Yeah. If you're doing something really specific that you know, great. Otherwise, just ignore mm -hmm. any of that. Like, hey, this allows me to do this very one specific thing. Some examples. Uh, macro. 
whether mm. that is like a macro ring light or a macro lens or just kind of any macro kind of extension tubes. Mm. Except allow um, a probe lens. Like it doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> you should buy one of those. Not sponsored. Uh, if you, I wish I was. <laughs> if you want to uh, give us give us a tip, you can uh, donate to, to my PayPal directly, and <laughs> I guarantee you it will go towards Allow a Probe Lens, 100%. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, don't uh, – like tilt shift lenses yeah. or uh, splash triggers when it – like so you can time like a delay with the splash. Like there's all this kinds of stuff that until you know that's the thing that is going to be worth spending $1,000 on because you're going to do this all the time, just – don't um kind of in that same realm are like uh any of the creative stuff that's like kitschy and fun Mm -hmm. um fractal filters yeah they're fun to play with but i've literally never used them on a creative shoot um lens baby like no not worth it it's so kind of like gets like oh yeah that's fun and different but it's only Mm -hmm. fun and different once Mm -hmm. um bokeh cutouts the little things that can turn your bokeh into the shape of like a heart or star. Like you don't see professionals use these because they're not good. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, called out. (laughs) You see so many of those like heart bokeh, uh, uh, photos around, uh, around Valentine's day. (laughs) Only on Flickr though. You don't, you don't see them on, on professional pages. (laughs) Uh, yeah, like all this creative equipment. I saw some, um, recently pop up. I, uh, it's, uh, like a, it's essentially a UV filter with like a little glass, uh, sphere built into it. So you can do those, um, you know, glass orb photos, but it's like built into your lens. So it's like a glass orb photo is all of the photos you take with it installed. Um, Mm. which, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like, <laughs> like, I think that's kind of a neat idea to make it a filter. Well, I um, like, the, I am like I going to buy one? Don't, I, don't, no. I like the fact that you don't have to hold it. Yeah. Right. Cause I, I hate the fingers. Yeah. That's the, the fingers. Worst part. Exactly. Like that's why I kind of like it is because it really makes it kind of ethereal. And like, there's literally just an orb that has all the entire focus scene. That's just floating but again, in that's space. One of those creative, weird niche things yeah. where when you're starting out, you need to learn how to take good photos Those types of things, like, they are fun. They are interesting. Yeah. But it kind of reminds me of when I was first starting to learn how to play drums. Mm -hmm. Uh, So for those of you who don't know, yes, I play drums. Uh, I was in the UW drum line. I've got a whole kit. Um, It's fun. It's a fun thing to do. But uh, back when I was learning how to play drums, uh, the very first Christmas that I was, you know, like, getting good, my dad went and bought me every single drum thing under the sun i got tambourines and uh four different kinds of crash cymbals and two different ride cymbals you don't need more than one ride cymbal that's a lie i even got a sizzle (laughs) cymbal and a china cymbal and uh what what else did i get uh let's see did i say tambourine cowbell uh wood blocks uh the egg shakers and it was just insane i'm like i just want to learn how to play my basic you know three tom kit really really well i just want to get good at drums then i had all these accessories thrown at me i'm like i don't even know what to do with all of these (laughs) so this is one of those things where as you move on as you grow if there's something there's like yes you're learning you're growing hey that'd be fun sure at it whatever but when you're first starting out if you are in the situation where you're actually looking for a for like your first good camera you don't need any of that garbage no 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 um the one of the things that i i should say kind of goes along the lines of filters and all that sort of stuff is is wide angle converters so this is a really easy one to fall into Uh, you think oh well i don't need to buy a wide angle lens i will buy just a normal lens and then i'll screw this wide angle converter onto the front of it they never work out they look terrible they're super soft just like don't use them save up for wide angle lens (laughs) that's all i'm going to say about wide angle converters I th- I think the only the only good thing would be like the um an off branded version of the Metabones if you shoot micro four thirds. Oh yeah, no no no. So so uh, lens adapters um that is totally totally legit. So um any of the the Metabones or Metabones knockoffs that are good anyway, definitely look up uh look up. Like I think the one I bought one. was Viltrox. Yeah, and I actually I literally have a Viltrox <laughs> one right here. Uh, so this is not this is not what I'm talking about. So this is a mount adapter, um, 
and uh, these uh, often um, have an element in them that that uh, changes the uh, field the, of view. the field of view of the lens. Um, these are these are legit, and uh, the Viltrox ones are pretty good. The Metabones ones, of course, are like the the name brand. Um, those are great. Um, the wide angle converter I'm talking about is a where you screw it onto the front of a lens. Oh, like a filter, like a UV filter, but it's actually a wide angle. Uh, lens uh, element on the front of it so you turn your you know your your standard uh, uh, 16 to 55 or whatever into a wide angle like ultra wide angle lens Um, those are really bad and uh, they make everything look soft and terrible and you should not use one I have I've actually never seen one before really okay Um, so this is something that maybe is just specific to me like I have used (laughs) one before I'm not sure if I bought it or if like like got it from somewhere um but i've used one before uh i don't think i i guess maybe this is just me being (laughs) being angry at these for no real reason but in my experience they're terrible and getting uh, actual wide angle lens is far superior um and really not that expensive all things considered so like don't get trapped into the wide angle converter thing um it might look like you're saving buying a lens but you really will end up buying another lens so yeah uh it is I, a thing. I, I will add in another <laughs> another thing that is could be so incredibly specific to me but yeah. i'm kind of annoyed uh, i spent 20 dollars on a lens i'm like cool this will be a fun 20 dollars. i have mm-hmm. literally never used it uh it was a mirror lens a 500 millimeter oh, those static are so cool, lens though. No, it's not because I ran tests on it and the quality of it is so garbage that it is the exact equivalent field of view as if I took my 200 millimeter lens and just cropped it down. So, yes, I'm losing pixels, but those pixels are high quality versus these more pixels that are low quality. And I put them side by side and at the same crop, they look identical. I'm like, well, I could just shoot with my 200. Why did I? Oh, I wasted 20 bucks. Yeah. Don't do it. Mirror They're lenses look so cool. I wish they worked. Like, they don't. They just don't. Uh, okay. One one more hardware thing, and then we've got a big category that we'll we'll finish up with. So uh, this is a little bit more specific to video and or me. Although I do see people shooting photos uh, with these pretty frequently, and that is the uh, CFL light kits that you see all uh. over. Um, you're it, it's like literally at this point. They're, they're ridiculous. They're like $100 or something, and you get three lights with soft boxes and stands. And um, Yeah, when, when you're looking at LED lights and considering that my LED light was something like $150 per <laughs> light, and you can get a three light kit for less than that, these do look attractive. Yes. But... But they're not good. Um, <laughs> I, I own one. I will tell you that they're not good. I bought one early on. Uh, in college when I had no money and I needed lighting for video. And yes, they work, but they're such a hassle to deal with. One, the light is really poor quality, super green. You have to like spend a bunch of time retouching your colors to make it look normal. Um, Two, the lights are incredibly fragile. Like the bulbs are incredibly fragile. And if you break them, um, they are toxic. uh, So they're kind of scary. And because they're not your standard wattaged bulb, they're very expensive to replace. Place. They're very expensive to replace. They're only cheap the first time, and then they're super expensive to replace. Um, the output is the only thing that's kind of going for them. Like the dollar value that you're spending for the light output that you get is legitimately attractive, but boy, you sacrifice literally everything else. I mean, the the mounts are super cheap. The stands are terrible. Um, everything just falls apart. It's not something that could travel. Setting with you them easily. up and taking them down is such oh, a pain. Oh, it's such a pain in the neck. And uh, they don't they don't travel. So um, if you try to like to cart these around to a shoot somewhere, they will break. Um, they will break almost guaranteed. Even if the bulbs don't like even if you somehow miraculously preserve the bulbs, the stands will break apart. Um, the plastic housing of the, the light head will break. These are just really bad. And um, I had one of those back in the day too. Yeah. But the problem that I had is if you plugged in too many of them, I was tripping the circuit. Yeah. Breaker. They use a lot of power too. And you can't, and because they use a lot of power, you can't easily battery power them. Um, LEDs are now getting, they're not quite at CFL cheap levels but they're getting so close um you can get surprisingly good leds for 
really amazingly low prices considering uh, nowadays even ones with built-in batteries and stuff yeah. um and they are so much better seriously just save like a little bit of extra money it doesn't have it doesn't even have to have to be like a whole lot more we're now talking in the like a cfl kit might be like 150 bucks we're talking in like the 200 to 300 dollar range you can get uh two or three um, really surprisingly good LED lights. Um, they're not going to be bicolor. They're not going to be super fancy, but they're going to be so much better quality um, that true. you should just save your money and go that direction nowadays. Um, there was a long period of time where CFLs were truly the only reasonable way to get some lighting, um, but that is not the case anymore. So just as of now, don't buy CFLs. <laughs> It's true. And so I, I will say the caveat to that yeah. is the Westcott spider light is easy to set up and tear down. Mm -hmm. It is uh, high quality construction, so it's not going to break. You still have an issue with you can't transport it without breaking the bulbs. The bulbs are still super expensive, mm -hmm. but that's also hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It is not at all in the same category yeah, as yeah. these three light setups that you see on Amazon. Yeah, so, sure. yeah, that is the exception where, like, the color quality on those lights are great, mm -hmm. but you're spending a ton and for yeah. that money like you could buy anything Just else buy leds yeah um the last category which we've talked about before um both in dedicated we literally and not, did an entire we literally episode. did an ep episode on this uh is just kickstarter junk <laughs> like don't <laughs> uh if you're starting out uh don't gamble your money on kickstarter uh if you're buying something for somebody else do not back a kickstarter and assume that it's going to show up in time for the holidays or for their birthday guarantee it will not especially will not. not during covid <laughs> it will not um yeah uh do not gamble your money on kickstarter uh, just don't do it um unless you go into it with eyes wide open, as we talked about in our episode about Kickstarter. Um, but as a beginning photographer or somebody buying stuff for a photographer, do not put your money into Kickstarter. It will be a disappointment um, at, at the very least due to a delay, but likely due to the end result of the product that you may or may yeah. not receive. There was the, the one, uh, so I mentioned this fractal filters. I mm -hmm. have no ill will against them, but the problem was they delivered about three years past the expected uh, delivery date. And by mm -hmm. that point, by the time the fractal filters came in, there, it had the trend had been so overused and popularized and then also died out on the back end that I had no desire to use any of them. Yep. So I have these really high quality manufactured things for creative toolkit and I've just never used them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, in that that's a that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like that can be the ultimately it was a, a high quality product, but it was delayed so much that it was still a bad experience. So um, yeah, don't waste your money on Kickstarter. Um, certainly, when you're starting out or buying a gift for somebody, um, if you want to do it later, okay, but it is a gamble. <laughs> <laughs> so everything on this list are things to not buy uh take a look next sunday we're dropping our holiday gift guide where it will just be a shopping extravaganza um we are going to go over uh best just recommendations across the board mm -hmm. of all the different things that you could buy it's probably going to be Either a very short episode with us just saying, look in the link, or a very long episode. We'll, we'll see. Um, yep. <laughs> but we're going to do all of the things that uh, we think that you'll be incredibly happy with buying. Um, and not, none of them really are going to be affiliate links because we're not big enough to be affiliates. So yep. uh, we just love and appreciate you guys. And we're just doing this because we want you to get the best bang for your buck um, and not waste it on anything that would be garbage or get a really a good deal on something that we think is going to be great for you yep so uh stay tuned for that um check out our uh kickstarter uh episode if you want more ranting about kickstarter and uh thank you so much for listening if you have questions or ideas for future episodes you can email us at hello at photo dash op dot show watch us on ben's youtube channel at non creative as in om nom nom share this with a friend and you can listen to photo op anywhere podcasts are sold or downloaded Cause it's free.